And we'll do a quick clap, not followed by two additional claps. But three time. additional claps. <laughs> <laughs> In three, two, one. Mark, I liked seeing your fingies prep. You were like, it's, you gotta get the thingy prep in. <laughs> it's it's cold. Like, hang on, it's let me cold flex. here in New England. It's so fucking I'll go, like, cold. Right? Fucking freezing. If you don't warm your fingers up before you clap, they will shatter. Yeah. <laughs> they won't tell you that, but that's true. You'd be out of the podcasting game for weeks after that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Loreheads, and welcome to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. Today we're talking about the Iron Maiden Rail, who was released December 10th, 2020. So, pretty recently. I was going to make an Iron Maiden joke, and then I remembered I didn't know anything about Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> How about that band, eh? Uh, oh, the Iron Maiden. <laughs> pretty, a band. pretty metal. They played some music. Rock. Some... <laughs> I think it's metal based on the tit- the the name of the band, but it is a metal. That it is tracks. Just, it's true. Is that, is that a metal? Ah, uh, yes. Iron Maiden. That metal. You know. <laughs> it's on the periodic table of elements. It's right after, it's like Iron, then Iron Maiden, and then Helium. <laughs> <laughs> that was the daddest bullshit. <laughs> <sighs> also, I'm lounging today, so you're welcome. John, everyone. like, forgot we recorded audio somehow, and he's like, should I change out my robe? And I was like, who gives it crap? Like, it's fine. <laughs> So then I asked him if he wanted me to get a blanket. So I'm also lounging with him. This is what I wear to work most days. It is. Very professional. Very professional. Yeah, extending that professional professionalism into the podcasting. I, I like yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm wearing my work uniform to the podcast. <laughs> Except when you have to do video at work and then you take your robe off. That's how I know you've had a video meeting. <laughs> right. Because yep. your robe's not on. <laughs> <laughs> that's true facts it's i wear these rare. like busted like white um sleeveless ones and and every now and then i have to get on a call uh, and it's a race to go like okay i gotta throw in a t-shirt <laughs> 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 i didn't the other day because i was i had the baby and my and my boss didn't care but it was pretty funny i was like oh man i'm looking yeah. really schlub right now <laughs> i don't know what boss would expect you to be working in like business casual in your fucking house right but, absolutely not. unless you're in meetings all day video meetings all day but. like with clients Customer maybe yeah. but like not other co-workers yeah. fuck that <laughs> fuck those people yeah we really got on a tangent here so yeah, real yeah, <laughs> no it's okay uh she doesn't have much linked on her universe page <laughs> is her bio and that's it <laughs> she does have a color story that you can find on the universe page but it's not linked on rel's page and she has a release trailer also not linked you gotta google the name of the story on universe for it to show up on universe so that you can read it on universe or you could just go to the wiki or go to the wiki yeah right well you know (laughs) always the better choice she was i mean she was released a while that oh wait wait you said 2020 (laughs) right 2020 and like champions really sense her i don't know she really fell through the cracks here it's so weird like at least put her color story on there right you wrote it it. i was gonna say i bet the url the url even is rel colors like dash probably i didn't look but probably yeah i I would bet but (sighs) yeah what does uh what does rel sound like oh fuck um i didn't i did not look up what she sounded like i didn't i have played her and I feel like she just sounds like a, a like a lady. She does yeah. kind of just sound like a lady. Um, I don't know, John. How about you do impression? I wrote down I a quote for you. Do oh, whichever one you want. There's there's always two. You get to choose. Well, I'll let you do that second one. <laughs> um, it's not like as deep as I think because she's a teenager. She growls and yells yeah. a lot. She sounds like a like a you know just like a lady, but like an angry one. Okay. Noxians aren't the heroes they think they are. Was that the yelling a lot? Wow, I really this was in some it. weird places, but I that was, <laughs> that was some weird emphasis on some weird syllables. <laughs> you, you got the right. It's the right like uh, sound palette, though, right? Like, you, thank you. Oh, I had the right sound. The right sound palette. That sounds yeah, very sound what a podcast thing to say. <laughs> oh my god, my sound palette is an a sound good ear feel. Right. When you're right. Really I don't think that had a good ear feel, and I'm the, gonna know the for aural sure. radiance was great. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, she's got iron body, iron will. 
Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, I can kind of hear it now. An angry young lady. That is Rel. <laughs> yeah. You know I can see you, right? Gross little gerbil man. Is that about Timo? That is actually Cled. about Cled. What? <laughs> but Timo has a stealth. <laughs> yeah. I, you know. <laughs> I mean, depending on what version of the lore we're talking about, all the Yordles have some sort of stealth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I guess that makes sense. You're right. Mm. He's a Noxus. All right. I'll give it to you. <laughs> okay. In on a technicality. Uh, <laughs> oh, <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll go over her bio. Um, we're recording this kind of late, so I did this days ago, so I straight up don't remember what my notes are, so this will be fun. Uh, this is by Jared Rosen and David Slagle. Okay. Which also made me curious That's... if this was one of Jared's first ones or not. Two people, huh? Oh, well. I'll be curious. That's an interesting point we should revisit. It is interesting to me that there is a dual credit for the bio, which I think we never yeah. see most of the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I it imagine, like, curious. I usually imagine multiple people are coming up with the lore in one person's writing. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Rel was not a normal girl. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. She was super duper special because her mom was an heir to a fallen noble house. <laughs> That's kind of what it sounded like. <laughs> really, it made Rel super, super sad, and that made her magical. That's kind of the takeaway I got here. <laughs> is that <laughs> I remember kind of- do you you're nodding, right? Yeah, yeah. She yeah. I mean it really worked upset. in Matilda, why not? <laughs> You know, oh my god. She's mad, she's that's mad the fucking Matilda. pot of Matilda. <laughs> this, is, this is like if Matilda broke bad. <laughs> I really need some kind of movie poster for Matilda, but it's Rel and she's broken bad, please. Um, oh, and then I said, like, the opposite of Lux. That's kind of the same, the similar too. Lux if she broke bad. Wait a minute. I'm just putting this together. Oh, uh huh. Matilda's full of Iron Maidens. Oh, weird. What? <laughs> fucking spooky. Right? What? That thing that Mrs. Trunchbull locks the kids in is an Iron Maiden. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I mean, not like the full bore one, because she doesn't pierce them with a thousand little needles. Or, like, or but they spider. do have the they needles. Just, oh, yeah. It's been a they just have to stand Matilda. still and hope they don't die. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Matilda's fucked up, man. Yeah. Matilda's really <laughs> fucked up. It was also one of my favorite movies growing up. And the remake made me cry a few times. <laughs> uh, anyway, Rel could manipulate metal. Ooh, her parents tried to exploit this, and one day they met a pale lady. Oh, who is it? Uh, LeBlanc wants to <laughs> use Rel to defeat Mordekaiser. Um, I put my first gripe here. Why don't they just say this? They try to be like really like. Do they have a rule that they're not allowed to mention other champions in someone's bio? Because they they don't list it, list LeBlanc by name. They don't say Mordekaiser by name. We know what it is. And what if someone doesn't? Then they're just extra fucking confused. Just say it's LeBlanc. <laughs> and Mordekaiser, I'm so annoyed. I don't know why this bothered me so much, but it did. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Rel was sent to a school like Matilda like matilda um she was very very good and forced to fight other students by the time she was eight after the fight like a magic sigil was grafted into her arm which amplified her powers and from that point forward she never saw any of her dueling opponents (laughs) again (laughs) when rel was 16 she was kind of tired of this shit and threw her instructors aside and went down a forbidden wing of the academy this is all so vague and weird that she's just like i'm getting out of here and then just went down a different like just leave i don't understand why she went down this forbidden wing instead because it's forbidden really haven't you ever seen beauty and the beast (laughs) here's my second gripe (laughs) establish the forbidden wing make rel interested in it give us a reason why she has decided to do this because it makes Mm -hmm. absolutely no this comes out of nowhere a forbidden wing anyway she finds all of her former dueling partners here they're described as being nullified uh and that's described as emotionless puppets devoid of memories have they brought up nullified people at this point and other i don't think so because they kept saying it like i was supposed to know what the fuck this meant capitalized almost right like yeah capitalized yeah and then i went on the wiki and i'm like is this like a link the word nullified or something and it never is so they they're just like that we're just supposed to know what that is yeah Um, it's like a it's like a, a a way more intense version of what damasi is doing basically like it drains the magic but instead of just like getting rid of it and the people are like kind of 
you know, permanently depressed. They're transferring the magic, and the people are just shells. Mm-hmm. It's yes, it's like yeah. a, if you've seen or if you've if you've read or seen his dark materials, it sounded exactly like what happens when someone gets severed from their oh. daemon. It made me think of that. It made me think of. I feel like. David and Jared were playing a lot of Bioware RPGs because she's a lot of Jack <laughs> and she's a lot of uh, the Tranquil from Dragon Age Origins, if you're familiar with that mm-hmm. at all. She is a lot of Jack, and I'm going to bitch about that later. <laughs> oh, I've got, I have a whole, in the vein of the oh, games shit. we play, I have a Jack oh. Orrell quote game, so we'll do that too. Oh! Oh, yes! Oh, that's I exciting. That. I'm going to be so bad at it, and we're going to be disappointed because Mass Effect is one of my favorite game series ever. It was harder than anyway. I thought it would be, but we'll, we'll talk about Oh, it's going to be really tough. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, she also discovered here that her mother was behind all of this to make Rel the most <gasps> powerful soldier Noxus have ever seen. <laughs> Gigads! Mommy, no! <laughs> but I trusted her mommy because I knew so much about her. Mm-hmm. This had a lot of impact and on again, me. Again! Again! <laughs> No, okay. Anyway, Rel destroyed the school, freed the students. She's now an enemy of Noxus, fighting against Noxus and the Black Rose while trying to save any children who are being used the way she was. So, let's complain. Because. Yeah. <laughs> what? I have only good things. Um, I'm frustrated because there's so many tropes here that I fucking love. One of my favorite is like an escaped experiment. So, Jack yeah. is one of my favorites. Eleven from Stranger Things. I love that trope. And I don't like. I'm annoyed that I don't like this more. Guy but from again, the furnace. Is that the name? Oh, of this escape show? from furnace. Escape from uh, furnace. Lockdown. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Kind. Of, well, yeah. It's been. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what you're referencing, but you seem very like unsure. It's, a, it's of a, like quality. a kind of older YA series. It is similar, but it wasn't like the vibe I was feeling. But um, yeah, I love like a weird mother daughter relationship, like a like a messed up one. Love that shit. <sighs> Why don't I? like this because <laughs> they didn't establish any of those it's things true. they just told me. They I just mean, said that they existed <laughs> it's a bio right like they have so little time to do all of this and this is like this is too much for a bio this needs to be something else in order for me to give a shit it's also not like it's so we've weird. had longer bios than this like yeah. I mean, they didn't need to include all of it but they could have included more of it mm. yeah i uh I, I feel a lot of the way that you're you're feeling rebecca it's like drenched in like it's very edgy it's drenched in these tr- these yeah. tropes, um, and, and there are other edgy ones that we've we've liked. For me, it, it it didn't didn't work, and I think like you were saying, the deal with the mother is a big problem because it's like there's no, it, it's always kind of portrayed in my mind the way it reads is that they're very distant anyway. So it's not like yeah, it's not like she's like I don't know. I, I feel like there's a lot of things I'm trying to say. I'm trying to get all organized in my brain, mm-hmm. um, but it didn't it didn't work for me as as well. It's it's really grim dark. It's like dripping with edge. This is like. Man, this is like a really classic kind of way too tragic like D and D character backstory where mm. they come in at level one and they also want a bunch of like special equipment and like unique abilities oh. and stuff that they thought up. <laughs> it made me think of um, Aphelios a bit, and I, I actually went back and listened to it a little bit. And I think something you said about Aphelios was that this feels kind of fan fictiony, and that's mm. I, I feel the same way about this a bit. Yeah, and that's kind of what made me wonder if this was when maybe Jared was transitioning mm. to the narrative team of fish. Cause he was just in community with us when I was there. So at some point he transitioned to the narrative team. I'm curious if this was one of his earlier ones and that's why there's a co-author He was kind of like a journeyman type yeah, maybe. thing that might know. explain it. Cause I mean, generally speaking, I mean, I feel like we've been pretty big fans of the shit that Jared's written I mean, and not, this didn't resonate. It's not that it's, <laughs> badly written it's just that they're trying to fit a lot in a really really short window and trying to make me care i don't know i just i don't know if they thought about it as as much as it needed to be thought about i like your opinion or your um uh god you pointing out that she wasn't really close to her mom anyway it felt like whereas if they had a really tender relationship this that would have been so much more hard hitting or tender as noxian noxians can be very tender yeah it's not Yeah. You know what is a, I don't know. You know what's a really good thing to compare against would be Cassiopeia, another person who had their life completely fucking changed by the Black Rose, who had this massively strong relationship with her mother. And it's like I think that would be an interesting thing to do with Rel is draw her up against Cassiopeia. They they're kind of similar mm. and they're kind of weird mirrors of each other and she can have a, a completely um distant relationship with Rel can have a completely distant relationship with her mother. 
you can kind of compare and contrast the way it's affected those two. Um, but the fact that it's her mom leading it really does feel like it's supposed to be like this big shocking revelation and it's supposed to make it even more tragic. Um, but it doesn't, it, it's like you said, the relationship isn't there. And with the Felios, I think the thing that saved him, we kind of talked about was that, you know, he's got a loon and there's this real, that relationship is really well developed and very integral to both of them. So he kind of yeah. s- pulls him back into being a little more like he works, whereas Rel maybe doesn't in that way. Yeah. And I think, I mean, even even from a writing standpoint, and I don't, I don't feel like I usually complain about writing because I, <laughs> I don't know what what the fuck do I know? But <laughs> you I, read. I feel like swapping between straight narration, sarcasm, mm. and a quote here: "Terrell's parents, this was something to be exploited for Rel's own sake, of course," which seemed like it was coming either from their head or from a sarcastic narrator, and then seemingly from Rel's mind at the end of the story with, like, there's nothing in this world that can stop her. Like, is that, like, for real? Like, there's not? Like, is that, are you telling me the truth, narrator? Because if so, good game. I guess we're done here. Wrap it up. (laughs) That that one line of, like, oh, for Rel's own good, of course, like, that really stuck out a bit like a sword. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's a shame because I like the way it it opens where it it kind of sits tells you what's going on now where there's these wanted posters and there's this big threat in Noxus and then it kind of pulls you back to tell you what her story is. It's like I like that. But um I do agree, maybe a more consistent uh like authorial voice. Voice, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um uh from a content standpoint, uh, why did they keep these puppets around? That's what are they what do these puppets fucking yeah. do other than service smoking guns if they ever yeah. get caught? This whole like band <laughs> corridor is like just so bad. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. I I don't. I want to say I don't hate Rel. I I think that she's really interesting. <laughs> Let's make it clear. I don't hate Rel. Okay. I don't hate Rel. I really there's a lot here that I really like. Um, and I I find her very interesting. Almost, but <laughs> but this whole corridor was just so so bad. Like yeah. it doesn't make any sense. It's no. not established. Why are they all here? Right, and we find are they out- eating them? I don't understand. Why do they keep them alive? Just kill them. You're Noxus. Exactly, and it even says in her color story afterwards that a lot of these people like need to be physically fit. Like they're not they're, even in a yeah, state of mind to feed to- themselves. They're just keeping all these kids here. As a resource drain, which seems very anti noxious and Noxus. as proof of all the shit they're doing. And then when Rel does escape, they say that there's a, a, a hustle to get rid of the nulls everywhere. Like, you can get rid... You're Noxus. <laughs> you know how to get rid grave. of these That's children. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I Just get Cal Cled. He'll get rid of them all for you easily. <laughs> yeah, he's got, yeah, he's got plots all over. I completely agree. Um, it's a real shame, too, because that ends up being one of her big things she's doing now, is she's going to go get all of the null, they call them. She's going to go save them. But it's like, it makes no sense that they would be around. So that's something yeah. I would change. Definitely and what is she doing to save them? Is she putting them out of their misery? Right? I don't understand what's going it's on. It's never here. established that there's any way to transfer her mad like any magic back to the null. They're just like yeah. they're just like that. That would be interesting if she could give up her powers and then all of a sudden she's like, "Hang on, I'm actually really powerful." <laughs> and, and she doesn't want to give up her powers to save these people. That could be an interesting dilemma. Right? Like I've got to fight Mordekaiser, but I also want to save these kids. <laughs> and and she wants to take down the Black Rose just in general, but she's contemplating giving up some of her magic i like that dilemma or her realizing coming to the realization she can't save them and then having to make a decision from there or is she going to kill them then and what does that look like are they are they are they consciously there are they can they recognize her they just don't explain what nullify really means so yeah i i i'm really liking the ideas that y'all are, are putting forward i think putting her in a position where she has to like face more of a conflict that's that's not so uh physical like real world combat conflict um would be a really interesting and fun way to sort of start playing with it i mean a big thing i would change is i would big thing i would change is i would swap around a lot of the timeline of how that escape works because it's weird to me that she's just decides one day fuck this i'm done doing this <laughs> yes that then, too as a part of that escape discovers the big secret i feel like knowing that secret would be the inciting incident to cause her to want to leave right um 
The other thing is that like she her, also. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say she has to n- know. Yes, that like because <laughs> all of her dueling opponents disappear, and we'll talk about it in the short story. But she has a friend that she made, and she knows at some point she's gonna duel him and never see him again. Mm-hmm. So is she just thinking they're being sent away, or she's not that dumb? Yes, but like, maybe like she's young and naive. Up. But <laughs> <laughs> they're sent <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a great time they Look have a lot the of flowers oh yeah i mean when she was eight, um, it's like one thing but yeah, yeah. No, no 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 for sure when she's a very very young child but but that like that ties to another kind of thing i had with this like I, obviously this needs to be a black rose thing because the goal of this whole thing is kind of defeating mordekaiser i guess or for her specifically but if the black rose is kind of positioned as this like really smart operating in the shadows thought of every contingency type thing there's so many dumb mistakes that these fucking schools make like the the whole draining thing like was she gonna drain rel i mean her it was her mother in charge if rel lost a matchup would she have drained rel like the other people didn't have metal bending powers and if they weren't gonna drain rel like why not why are they draining the people that she beat? They clearly don't give a shit about these other kids. They're kind of powering up the metal bender here. Drain yeah. other fucking kids, not the ones that she's seen. Because you know that's just going to raise suspicion. That's yeah. so fair. God, I, I, why didn't you even think of that? Yeah. I had that exact they could thought just, too, right? Why does she have to fight them? Just suck out their little powers and <laughs> put them in a sigil or however it works. Also, why is LeBlanc trusting something this important to other people wouldn't she be more heavily involved and if she were these dumbass mistakes i assume wouldn't be happening this would it be more just... interesting you know she's got clones everywhere <laughs> why doesn't she leave a clone just leave a clone here yeah uh, well, hmm. it's another question of like why is rel's mother the one who is like the one who should be running all this because as far as we know she was just some member of a some fallen no- noble house who was in a yeah. position to be like taken advantage of by LeBlanc, right? Like LeBlanc gives them something they want. Sh- they give them Rel. Like why is her mom also need to now be the headmistress of this very complex organization? Yeah. Oh my God, you're right. So what is she getting out of this deal? She has given up her daughter. Is it for honor and glory? Which I could buy, but she doesn't need to be there for that. She's still not running it. Is Rel's mom LeBlanc? <laughs> Is that Fuck the it, twist? Right? One but of like, LeBlanc's clones. One of LeBlanc's dumb clones. One of, one of the dumber clones. <laughs> Once that's been apart for too long so, and is kind of so, so you know lost how Zareth, the thread. Zareth <laughs> drunkenly made the Cobra thing. This was LeBlanc got fucking shit wrecked one day and made just a dumbass clone who got knocked up and was like, I'm gonna beat me to feed fucking border guys. <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make a girl and she's gonna control that <laughs> fucking metal. Fucking okay, metal. LeBlanc. I think you've had enough. <laughs> yes. <I'm gonna> <laughs> LeBlanc. Give me your keys. You're LeDrunk. Le dr- <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna LeBlanc out tomorrow. No. no. Hey. <laughs> I'm liking the idea that her mom, has, the, the mom she found, is just a LeBlanc clone, and her mom was actually like loving and cared for her, and, and and maybe tried to pull the plug on the whole thing, and LeBlanc replaced her. And Rel has to, like, confront that, like, I've had all these terrible feelings about her, and now I realize, like, she did start looking out for me at the end. How do I feel about that, you know? That yeah. That could be interesting. Yeah. Um, could it be interesting for Rel to decide that in, instead of defeating Mordekaiser, she wants to help Mordekaiser? Sure. Bolster his armor <laughs> with her of. own metal. <laughs> or control him, maybe, instead of saying, you Ooh, know. living puppet. Yeah, she'll think, well, let me raise this monster. Maybe she realizes she can't take the Black Rose. They're too powerful. As of right now, she's very arrogant. She's 16, it's fine. She can control metal and kill people. I would be arrogant, yeah. too. I, I was know. arrogant at 16, and I didn't do jack shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get it. But maybe she gets knocked down a peg, and she's like, all right, well. Let me get this big iron iron man <laughs> well, see, that, that LeBlanc's afraid of. I kind of like that idea because another thought I had was I would like to see her in a room with Swain where she's really opposed to Noxus because she has this perspective yeah. that Noxus knew about everything and allowed it to happen. Which I'm going to Swain assume, probably doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, from what yeah. Riot has told like, us, like, <laughs> Swain doesn't know about some Black Rose things. And I assume this is one yeah. of them. And I think that, I'm pretty sure Darius isn't up in there being like, oh, I hope Rel's doing all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think that could be a lot of fun because it's it reminds me of that like Kiana story with Aya, where they are working, they they are kind of at cross purposes, but they do have a shared enemy, and and they're like mm. they have to kind of maybe ally, even though Rel ultimately doesn't does want to like fuck up Swain or something like that. I like that. that. Could be fun. Yeah. All so right. she has it in her head, like, all right, well, when we're done teaming up, I'm gonna kill this guy. Yeah. And Swain's like, she probably thinks she's gonna kill me. She's an <laughs> idiot. But and then Swain, Swain, kind of thinking he could take advantage of her because he's much older and wiser than she is. That would be really fun. It's hard. It's hard because so much of her character through like the VO, it's not really expressed in the lore. The VO is a lot like. You know, I've been I've been betrayed, and I don't trust anyone, and I don't let anyone close to me. You know, um, which so it's really hard to me, for me to imagine a time when she would be willing to deal with Swain, which is why I think yeah. you should team her up with some people like Riven. You get Alistar in the mix, always oh, always going for Alistar, Cled, because I think you could convince Cled to fight against Swain, right? Like things like that. I think that would be a lot. Cled of Cled would be interesting. That'd be good. Yeah. Like if you if you could either. If you could either do a sweet Avengers type team up like that to fight against Swain or establish a type of like fucking Palpatine Anakin relationship between Swain and her where she doesn't I'm, need to oh, trust him, I but like he has that. some sort of power that he's willing to give her. <laughs> yeah. There's, I do really like that. So yeah. is what we're saying that there's a lot of potential with, with <laughs> Yes. <laughs> There is so much potential, There's but they really, they really wrote so hard in just wanting her to be a loner. And I think we've, est- there's too many of those types of champions and the whole, like, I've been betrayed. I don't trust anybody is so cliched. And I think it's really, really hard to do that in a way that's engaging. Mm-hmm. Like, and they, and they don't have time here. They didn't have the time to do that with Ralph. So again, give her a connection, which is a complaint I have with a lot of champions that I will feel more strongly about them if they have some connection. We'll get to the short story in a minute, I assume. We almost get that in her short story that she kind of made a friend <laughs> at school. I guess I'm just going to give away the plot of the, the plot of the short story. She kind of made a friend at school and then he was nullified and then she found him and he was already dead because somebody had stopped feeding him baby food, I guess. <laughs> or what did they fucking do? <laughs> we, were both, we were both at that point where we were giving our babies <laughs> mashed carrots and shit. So was that what they do? <laughs> oh my god, he took the spoon by himself. <laughs> 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 s- they swipe it in the mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, coming back out. Oh, so, you know. <laughs> How did you get carrots on your forehead? <laughs> How did that get there? Yeah. How did that get there? Uh, I agree about the connection thing because I think the idea of it to me, it doesn't read as some like, okay, I know that she has been led astray and, and lied to a lot, but because there's no like significant connection established at all in the bio, I don't know who she feels betrayed by. Because like we said, doesn't seem to have a strong relationship with her mother. So that's another thing I would change is that I would make that escape a group effort between her and some students. And then if they discover that, that whole drainage situation, um, alliances shift mid, mid escape, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Not, okay. Suddenly they think that she's in on it. She yeah. must have known. And honestly, she must have known. Or her mom. <laughs> you know, that's another thing that. Oh, be, true. Her mom of, being you know. involved. They're like, hey, well, fucking, you're the one who's getting all these powers. You're getting stronger. Your mom's <laughs> behind it all. Do the other kids at this school think that they're. Learning they, anything? <laughs> they exclusively recruit kids who think they're the protagonist. Oh my god! <laughs> Are they learning something? I'm so. They confused. just have like these like eight hour like homeroom periods where it's like just work on whatever, just doodle. Jimmy, yeah. come here. <laughs> it's now I'm annoyed again. Okay, so because <laughs> I think they're really trying, they're trying to establish like these schools that LeBlanc has set up, and they're doing a bad, bad job about it. Because this one seems to be just about funneling magical children into Rel. So are you? Are they, well, what if these magical children would also be really useful? I don't understand. And we all saw what happened at that other school for magical children. That Annie burned Annie down burned one ground. of them, and we, that also uh. wasn't established. But 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 maybe that's the point of the duels. Is like okay, if we're all stronger than these magical children, then obviously they're not worthy Worth. enough. But she, th- she also has the strength of like eighteen magical children at some point. So what do you fucking expect, right? Blanc or whoever came up with this shitty idea, Rel's mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, weird. She's still the strongest, my little girl. <laughs> 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 nepotism that's all this is <laughs> this it's fucking like, helicopter mom <laughs> god damn See, that would be a fun way to that would be an angle to take right with that relationship is like yeah that helicopter like 
it's something you would do with it to give it a little more like texture, right? This is like when we were playing Valorant and we would die and we would lose all our guns and everyone else would keep their guns. <laughs> Right? We would just get like shit how, man, how are we still losing? And I gotta Weird. tell you, it took me like 30 rounds of losses before I even realized that was happening. <laughs> because that's when we because got our I first win. <laughs> that's oh, gonna be man. some bonus Patreon content. If you want to hear me get progressively drunker <laughs> and angrier than I've been in a very long time. It's, it's like a nice like that's, linear that's gonna like, be up there. Like, distribution of like, as the alcohol enters, the anger levels just go up and up. I, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I was pretty uh, peeved. Uh, yeah. Fuck Valorant. <laughs> yeah. All right, last that, <laughs> last uh, thing I have to say about the bio. Sure. Yeah. It said there's a quote here that said that uh, when th- there was the big escape, it left the Rose scrambling to recover the null and erase any trace of what their organization had done, which kind of implies that if evidence of what their organization had done existed it might be a problem for them and it sure seems like rel would want to maybe take one of these null with her at some point as some (laughs) sort of evidence but it's 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 she might not know i don't i I can't imagine leblanc scrambling to cover anything have we established that the black rose is bigger than leblanc yeah they've got a bunch of people they all think that they're the that they're really important yeah leblanc's like no Okay. Interesting. But like, okay. But I feel like it's kind of implied in the short story that Rel even knows that this is happening. Like, it, it, mm. I think it said that they knew that they were trying to smuggle Null over the borders to like hide the fact that they existed. Like, why are they just killing them? I don't <laughs> know. I'm so confused. Can someone please explain that to me? Is Necrit around? Necrit, do you know? Do you know why Noxus <laughs> just wasn't Smash killing cut. the Null? Of- They're literally empty shells they have to spoon feed and you're telling me noxus is like oh we gotta keep them around we can't kill them that's murder but we do have to hide them because (laughs) no one can know they exist (laughs) not even noxus like the black rose the most mercenary you're right (laughs) i'm so what is this what is this it makes no sense i'm so annoyed the black they're not gonna get in (sighs) trouble They don't have DNA evidence here, guys. You'll get away with it. It's fine. Yeah, right? It's like, just let them loose into the woods. Or that. <laughs> just let them out into the woods. Like, Annie will probably find them and burn them for funsies. Yeah, like, imagine, uh, imagine worst case scenario, some Noxian war band comes across this weirdo kid who can't feed themselves. What, they're going to be like, we got to go tell Swain about this. This is the utmost, uh, like. Right? <laughs> Swain's going to be like, why are you fucking, they're not even going to get to see Swain. They won't even get to Swain. <laughs> Yeah, one doesn't. of his birds will be like, F- "You're not important enough." Right. <laughs> Who's this weird kid? Get him out of here! Get that, <laughs> take his bib off. I mean, I think the thing too is just like, it's such a simple thing to change, right? Where it's like, instead of there being them being null that they're they're getting out, it's like, oh, the the rest of the kids they they took whichever ones they could, and now they're trying to squirrel them away to other hidden spots. So she's trying to go out and save sure. them before yes. they they go to ground. Easy peasy, right? <laughs> Anyway, the short story. I mean, <laughs> the second grave. It, frankly, yeah. I did, yeah. It's Jared Rosen. It's it's like you said. It, she's on the track of Gabriel. What's his name? The the yeah. Noel ch- boy. <laughs> Not to be confused with the void. I don't get it. The null and void. Oh, sorry. I thought you. Oh, I thought Gabriel. you were talking about Gabriel. <laughs> that made no sense. At I was all. waiting for something to connect the tissue. I um, know. I was like, is this like a Jesus God thing? I don't know. I know there's a Archangel Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I heard, heard of him. Which I feel like you I've know. I've heard of him because it's supernatural. Supernatural. <laughs> no, no, hang on. Hang on. Constantine. Give me some credit. Okay. okay. <laughs> Order not, of not operations. The, not the here. comics, the Keanu Reeves one. That's the only one. <laughs> it's a fucking um, great movie. I've only seen it once. I would rewatch it. It's so good. I think I have it on DVD. Oh, I'll bring oh. it over next weekend. We'll <laughs> watch Constantine. <laughs> Poppy's got to see. She's six months already, and she hasn't seen Constantine. I'm What's she been doing with her life? Behind, you know? Get your shit together, Poppy. The developmental milestone. Six months. Able to watch Constantine and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on her, her file after the uh. Okay. Um, she's on. She's chasing after Gabriel. She runs into a war band. She smushes them. Um, and one of th- one of them is one of her old instructors, uh, who tells her where Gabriel is, and she goes, and he is like you said, he has died from malnutrition. So she makes a little grave for him, and and moves on. 
that, yeah. that's it. We get to see, you know, a bit of what she looks like in game. This is a, a one of those action pieces that really um, utilizes like their in-game abilities, which is fun. I do like the look of Rel a lot and the idea of like the metal horse and that turns into armor. I think it's very cool. So yeah. uh, uh, it's a shame her lore sucks so hard. Yeah, I liked um, I liked the, this as an action piece a lot because it has some lines yeah. around like. Uh, I don't know, she's using her metal building stuff, right? And it's like, as the soldier's yeah, eyes yeah. widened in horror, the last thing that went through his mind was his helmet. And it was like, nah, that was like, a good line. line. <laughs> she, like, yeah. snaps, yeah. she, like, bats someone away, and it's like a lump of metal and flesh just, like, hits, like, in the distance. Almost like a cartoon. Mm-hmm. Just, like, bing! You know, just into the sky. <laughs> <laughs> that all is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I wrote a few quotes down from this one. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, Rel thought about the Null often. She didn't want to, of course, but the thoughts were intrusive, which I thought was ironic since the Null can't think of anything at all. I think it's ironic because she didn't think of them when she was escaping. (laughs) (laughs) Or like she didn't think of them the entire time she was at school. She's like, I wonder where they're all going. (laughs) I want to go visit To get ice cream, maybe. Man, (laughs) weird that I fought the fire guy and now I have fire power. (laughs) How'd that happen? Bananas. No, she doesn't get that power. (laughs) It's just a level up. It's just like she, she just powers up. Yeah. Well, that just reinforces the fact that they would never drain her. She's the only one with metal powers yeah. then. They don't get to trade that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this time, she was far on the outskirts of Noxian territory, following whispers of another null child being secreted over the border, which, for the record, secreted is spelled the same way as secreted. And when <laughs> I read it through the first time, I was like, a null child being secreted over... I don't want to think about children being secreted anywhere. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> I marked it an actual face bomb there. Uh, All right. Okay. One thing I liked about this story, actually, I think this is the first story we get which, with a view. We're getting a view of Noxus from a Noxian who hates Noxus. Mm. So, like, the descriptions Rel is giving of the areas are, like, very different. So she she talks about, like, fields that are useless and left barren because all the food had to go towards, like, fueling useless uh, wars everywhere. And mines that are totally stripped of ore. They're just also barren because they had to be used to make weapons for all these useless fucking wars. And, like, it she the way she's telling it, too, like, it tells of a region that, like, almost needs to it's like it's self-consuming because it needs to expand at all times because it doesn't have any resources but the reason it doesn't have any resources is because it's constantly fighting to expand (laughs) it's the fucking ouroboros eating its own tail (laughs) like which is very accurate to how empires kind of work like they need to keep conquering right i i like Again, I'm liking the potential of that. I like that too because we get some of like Rel's a little bit of like voice where she's like, she's just like this stupid, ugly country full of stupid, ugly people. Uh, yeah, a little bit of like, the character <laughs> speaking there, I guess. You are 16, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. Plus, there's not a lot aside from maybe that one Daria story a while back where we see kind of like a little just like walking around Noxus, you know, just like what's the yeah. countryside like? Apparently, it's really fucking shitty. Shitty. Parts of it are, which is kind of uh, neat to see. So, my my only yeah, my only gripe with this kind of action piece was there was also a line that said a second fighter attempted to impale Rel's mount, <laughs> but her spear snapped between its steaming plates, and like, y'all, this this mount is clearly metal. Yeah, I don't. It's not like I know it's shaped like a horse. It doesn't look like a horse. <laughs> you know it's metal. Why are you trying to impale it as if that will Listen, do anything? <laughs> they don't have like good vision coverage. <laughs> that Noxus, she thought it was a real horse. A nearsighted <laughs> soldier, like I think that's a horse. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a horse. I'm gonna kill it. Imagine, <laughs> scary. Yeah. Frankly, in this and even the bio, her abilities come off. She comes off very strong, way stronger than she comes yeah. off in game. Like they described yeah. at one point, the lance being heavier than a mountain. And how she could like yeah. just, she can just superheat metal and it just like structurally collapses and she can rip like whole swaths of like veins of ore out of it. It's like really high level shit. And then you see her in game and she's just doing her her su- well, support. <laughs> she just dives into a team and dies. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least that's what I've seen her do when I play her. <laughs> yeah. 
I like her look too. I I do wish that she when she was armored up, she was more like a full on like knight. Um, because they even in this mm. short story describe her as a dark knight at one point, and I think yeah, being, yeah, cover like yeah. everything, right? Ma- yeah. Make her kind of look more like Mordekaiser. That'd be kind of fun. I thought that fun, could be right? kind of fun. And then you just have these, mm-hmm. and you know what else I like about that is it's kind of playing into this whole she doesn't let people in, right? So for the most part, she's pretty armored up. And then in these brief, like, moments, these windows, you see the rail underneath. Because the other thing is that in game, I don't see it, or in her splash even, I don't see a single sigil. And I get that she would cover that up. <gasps> Me neither. I was so confused. I was like, where are these sigils? Because yeah. apparently there were a lot of them by the time she left. <laughs> a lot of belly sigils, you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're all on her ass. Right. <laughs> really small. <laughs> like, I imagine it makes sense that she would cover them up. She doesn't like them. But I but think. But she's wearing a sleeveless shirt. <laughs> Pretty sure. Exactly, right? It's like, it would make more sense or more <clears throat> be more interesting to me if, like, in those brief moments where you saw un- the person inside the armor, you saw her just, like, completely sigiled out. And it'd be like, whoa, there's, yeah. a, there's a story there. Kind of like mm-hmm. how when you see Jack and she's completely tatted out. And it's like, whoa, there's a story <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I want to see some concept art on this. I wonder if that was like part of the initial concept and they're like, eh, it reads to rise and they just ditched mm. it and they're like, we'll, we'll put it in the story. People will figure it out. <laughs> you could have done it differently. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. I didn't even think about the rise connection. Because um, I mean, like a very different, like they'd probably be gold sigils and he's very all blue and stuff. Yeah. I don't know, it would look different. I would yeah, I mean, so. there's a way to do it for sure. Uh, uh, now, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Now. No, 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 no. You, you, you go ahead, my friend. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, if we were done with that one, I was also gonna mention that she, she shows up in a Samira story. Oh, that Samira one, kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. We can do that real quick. Um, so mm-hmm. this one is Daredevil Impulse by uh, Michael Luo, where basically Samira gets sent to capture Rel and kill anyone else she encounters. She doesn't actually know she's being sent to capture Rel specifically. I don't think she knows who the fuck Rel is. She's just been told to capture a weapon. Someone very dangerous who threatens Noxus. <laughs> um, so she does the killing part great. Um, <laughs> but she basically only finds the aftermath of Rel. Rel's come and gone. Um, uh, later, when catching up with her captain, uh, she kind of... Uh, you know they have a back and forth she leaves and then a nearby tattoo artist goes to the captain drops her disguise bam it was leblanc the whole time uh and she's like basically whatever samira needs you need to give it to her because uh the empire needs her and it made me really curious like why the empire needs samira specifically for this someone who notably relies on metal in her weapons in order to fight um i don't know why she's the one specifically the empire needs but leblanc seems very convinced that no one can do it but samir yeah oh. it had me wondering too it makes me curious uh because if, yes. if she had said that if leblanc had said that about rel that would have made sense to me but samira specifically right it's like why i don't know yeah guess we'll find out it's I like suppose. I don't know. This this to me like reeks of Professor X sending out Wolverine to fight Magneto. It's like he's the only one who can do it. Yeah. <laughs> did they say LeBlanc by name, or they were just like a they pale did lady? say what? LeBlanc? Oh, so they yeah. legally are allowed to do that, <laughs> but they just did for real story for some reason. I do agree with you. By the way, that is an annoying thing in the bio. It's like, why even bother, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like when they're trying to pretend Jinx isn't by his sister. We know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a whole show about it now. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag, I guess. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag, Riot! You know, he I tried like... to be sneaky. <laughs> that, fucking Riot. I like the Samira thing, too, because that, that would help pull her... I think she's she's down in Shirima, right? That's where she's operating? Or is she back up in Noxus at this point? I don't really know. I guess we'll find out. I, as of, uh, I mean, at least as of the Sentinel, she was back in Noxus. I guess that's true. I'll be curious. I feel like it could be a good thing that would help pull Rel down into Shrima and then put her in contact with Cassiopeia, because that's what I want to do with Rel. <laughs> so, maybe we do that. Um, do y'all want to? Do y'all want to guess quotes real quick? Oh, I absolutely do. Yes. Do you have more to say about the short story? 
Oh, now, no, John, get away from your quote. John's written down a lot of quotes that are okay. rebels. Well, maybe. You'll probably I don't them think any one. of these would be chat. I wrote down mostly quotes with Rel hitting on other women and men. Love it. Okay, great. She's got All a lot right. of thirst quotes. Oh, she's young. Hormones are flying. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, Jack or Rel. Let's 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 get it going. All right, first one. <sighs> I'm excited. Don't get comfortable. I work alone. Fuck. I'm gonna say Jack. I'm gonna say Jack too. That's Rel. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> strong start. Strong start. All right. Be don't so worry. Hard. This is gonna be so Here's hard. Here's another one. Okay. Sometimes you gotta work to give people what they deserve. You kind of said that like Rel. So now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just throwing this little lost. little spin no, on okay. it. Yeah. Jack. Sometimes you gotta... I'll say Rel to be different. Is Jack? Is Jack? Damn it. Yeah. Don't, don't ever be different. All right. We got another one. <laughs> Everyone who's ever stood in my way is dead or broken. I'm going to say Jack. I'm going to go Rel on that one. That's Rel. John, John Damn it. So I suck at this game. Well. Hell yeah, honey. It's <laughs> okay. Right. Anyone who screwed with me pays. Anyone who what? Screwed with me. Oh, pays. screwed with. Oh, God. What a potty Jack, mouth. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Jack. <laughs> it was Jack. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Lonely and alive works just fine. Thanks. Jack. Lonely and alive. Just go with your gut, honey. Don't think yeah. about it. Trust me, snap, I have a lot of points decisions. in this. I'm, like, I'm going to go Jack then. It was Jack. Y'all, y'all are picking <laughs> up on it. Up top. Uh, and then Not last always. one. Friends just get in the way. I'll say Rel, but I, God, I feel like they both probably said that at some point. And how would she know? She's only had one, and he didn't get in the way of anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, are you. But we'll go Rel anyway. It Fuck it. Rel. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all <laughs> sussed it out at the end there. That was a strong showing at the end. Well done. I love it. Thank you. <sighs> I want to play Mass Effect 2 now. Yeah. Just <laughs> looking this Jack. stuff up. It's like, man, yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of similarities there. I found well, it was a little too on the nose for me. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure they didn't intend <laughs> classic. It, but it's just like they're really similar, yeah. and I found if, if we're gonna compare them, I, I like Jacks a lot more, especially with I guess Mass Effect two spoilers a little um, <laughs> when they go and revisit the academy, which is something I'd like them to do with Rel, um, where we see that Jack's memory is not exactly one to one. To what actually oh, yeah. happened and it's, mm-hmm. there's a little bit more introspection going on with with what happened to her so that and that makes sense because it's such a traumatic thing to yeah. go through that you wouldn't necessarily remember it accurately especially if you're young when you're going through it yeah and sometimes past yeah yeah i mean you see that in the new season of stranger things too like yeah that kind of splintered mm-hmm. memory of what happened there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah well, some happier quotes. Here's, 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 here's Ralph thirsting after various people in Room Terror. Oh, oh, so uh, so your name's Echo? <laughs> that's that's cool. I'm cool. <laughs> You're really delivering uh, on it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one is uh, to Leona. <laughs> All right, Rel, be cool. It's just a tall, super strong armored lady. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute, Seraphine. Uh, well, bye. <laughs> we need more of this rel. This, like, just a, a teenager rel. Right. You know? She's so she's angry all the time. Teen- yeah, uh, she's just so mad. Mm-hmm. And this one is to fellow Noxian set. Ooh. <laughs> more like boss of having his shirt off. Oh, I think he heard that. (laughs) (laughs) And then after she kills them, these four people. (laughs) Uh, Just when I thought I knew him, he went back in time. (laughs) I hope this won't hurt my chances. Leona? Leona? (laughs) Uh, We would not be good together, Sarah. I don't know. Rel and Seraphine, that'd be a real, the real fun, grumpy, mm. <laughs> fun, dynamic one, you know, right? God, she would teach her how to play metal. <laughs> and then uh, finally, does this mean I'm your boss now? 
I gotta walk away. This is too much. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so Rel needs a date. Rel needs a date, mm-hmm. but friends are rather uh, no friends than alive. Or friends only <laughs> get in the way. <laughs> friends are rather no friends than alive. Nailed it. You heard John, it here first. 2023. <laughs> That's the t-shirt slogan. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, Rel, like you mentioned, also has the uh, champion trailer called Rel the Iron Maiden Champion Trailer. It's the name of that cinematic. Somehow. Uh, Which is actually pretty neat. It honestly, what this trailer gave me the vibes of is the final scene of Equilibrium. (laughs) When like the resistance is storming the citadel along to some wailing metal music. That's the fucking vibes this gave me. She just like, she's slowly running towards Noxus, ready to storm it. And then she's forming her, her horse around her. And then the wailing metal starts playing. That's her theme. Her theme's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That is true. Yeah. I was trying to remember how. It had equilibrium vibes for me. (laughs) I was trying to remember how equilibrium ends. I was gonna say, wait, you mean like with Tay Diggs getting his his face cut off or like. (laughs) I mean, that's another cool wow. moment. Equilibrium a, dif- a different vibe, but another cool moment. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a real shame that they have that guy hit her right in the shoulder, though. That's kind of a that's a little rough spot for me on this one. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, with the axe. The axe, yeah. Like, because it just it, it feels like you know she doesn't do anything. She just kind of stands there, and he just kind of whiffs the the hit. I guess maybe he thought he could pierce the armor. But, uh, mm. you know, oh, I kind of got the feeling I have to go back and watch it now. My read on it was that he was that where he was striking wasn't necessarily armored, but she just stopped his axe. I think it, she controls metal. It does. Con- it does get in her armor because she pulls it out. But you could still you could still play with it. Like, yeah, she pushed the axe like to a certain side or, or maybe the armor forms up and, where it's going to hit anyway. Like, it mm. seems like, mm-hmm. there's a lot you could do with it. But. It's not the most. It's a. It feels a little. It didn't cheap. read super. The fact that we're even having this conversation means that whatever they were trying to do didn't read super well. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I won't. I don't want to complain too much because I do like the. I do like. I like the concept of her making a fucking horse and riding it out of her armor. That is just fucking cool. It is yes. really cool. I, I remember what. <laughs> I was. I was. Uh, when I when I was randomly brainstorming. Um, parody things I, I forget who i was trying to think of a parody for it may have been oriana even um but i remember thinking the uh um god what is the name of the song uh, i'm a cowboy oh. on a Dang. steel horse oh. i ride <laughs> <laughs> well now you got your new rel parody <laughs> i know i was like oh this song could work and then i immediately was like no that song has a different person it'll work way better for <laughs> smart it's probably a little too on the nose but <laughs> no it'll be good that's <laughs> yeah, no, fine fuck it <laughs> And maybe you talk about how they want the null. And she is, I mean, she's literally, <laughs> alive. Wa- she's literally wanted, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. That song was written about Rel say. and not vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> they saw into the future. You know, John, we made each other watch a lot of movies over the years. And when I think of the movies that you made me watch that I think I like the least, like the two that come to mind are Equilibrium and Serendipity. <laughs> I've just been thinking about that since you're talking about equilibrium. It's like it's not your it's not your not my it's not your type of movie because like which there was a cow there was a there was a both of them yeah Uh, well (laughs) I know I like a rom com but serendipity was like painful to watch. Um, Your thing is like I really like kung fu movies and like I I like martial arts in my movies Um, and like I don't need to care about anyone. No, I don't need to feel like the combat is actually happening. Like, obviously, no, I don't most, care about that. You have said several times that he's like, oh, I hate watching. It's like they're dancing. I don't want to watch him dancing. It doesn't feel real. It's like it's choreographed. You, you've said that, that several times. In that voice <laughs> specifically. That's yeah. what I sound like. That's it's, a yeah. spot on impression of me. I, also I don't fucking like love when, that. I don't I, like as when... a fight choreographer, fight choreography is like, I fucking love that. I can like some of it. 
<laughs> but there's also they treat the ladies horribly and there's like no women in it that was really oh, an equilibrium with it. yeah and then that that western film you made me watch with it, all kilmer that's up there too i hate that movie Oh, uh, Tombstone? Tombstone, fuck. Tombstone. Anyway. You don't like Tombstone? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> <No>. right? <laughs> well, you're seeing her taste in I movies. We'll... Doesn't like Equilibrium. <laughs> right. Doesn't like Tombstone. <laughs> well, the better but you're my Huckleberry. Gosh, yeah. So am I your wife that got addicted to painkillers, so you hate me and wait for me to die and then marry a younger woman? No, Is you're my it? Huckleberry. Yeah, Huckleberry. <laughs> I don't remember who the character's name is. Sorry. <laughs> it's Val Kilmer. <laughs> oh, okay. Love him in Batman forever, but that's my taste in movies, by the way. <laughs> Actually, if you ever want to know my taste in movies, my favorite Batman movie is Batman Forever. <laughs> it's, it's a choice, right? I don't think it's, 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 it's certainly is, a choice. It's entertaining. I know, I know it's shit. a choice. That Exactly. <laughs> and it's one of the few that is. <laughs> that's so mean. No, Batman's fine. Anyway, the AUs, I guess. AUs. Mm. <laughs> uh,. Rel doesn't have a ton of skins. She's just part of two AUs. Uh, first one is Battle Queens. Once fractured by endless warfare, the collective queendoms of Elysia have realized the true nature of their world, that the magic holding their fantastical plane together is maintained only through conflict. They have thus allied through the unifying conflict of the Grand Coronation, though some alliances are beginning to show cracks. Which seems kind of like a world that Rel's specifically suited for. <laughs> and this is Battle Queen Rel. A young woman from the magic-starved Queendom of Calamity volunteered for the coronation by a shadowy cabal of aristocrats after a series of magical experiments. Having now won the crown and the power of her crest, Rel has discovered her powers were stolen from the people of her country, and she has vowed revenge on her puppeteers. This is kind of like... So, it sounds familiar, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like Full Metal Alchemist Rel. I don't know. That's kind of what makes me think of a little. Oh, man. That is pretty uh, funny. Now, this one it has a short story called Battle Queen Crests by Cat Manning and Jared Rosen. Um, this story picks up basically right after Rel is crowned. And the first thing she does with her power is just destroy the vizier who crowned her and all the shady aristocrats. Just fucking murders them outright. So it's kind of like, you know. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> and she's done. That's the end of that uh, <laughs> Don't need to check to... in with Rel anymore. What are you doing next, Rel? I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the long see metal Mickey ear. <laughs> <laughs> she's just on her armor. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, she's also in Star Guardian. Uh, I had to scroll <laughs> down a bit because it's a whole page of notes. <clears throat> Even though she's barely in it. Even though she's barely in it. <laughs> uh, in a vast and dark universe, young warriors are chosen by fate to protect the light of the stars. They're destined to burn bright, but collapse as furiously as they shine. And this is separated into seasons now, so she's part of season four. Uh, ancient enemies appear in Valor and City, scarred by Zoe's invasion, now defended by a new generation of Star Guardians. As darkness gathers in the skies above, Kaisa and Akali prepare their untested squad for a fight with forces beyond their comprehension, and the true threat that awaits beyond. Damn. Yeah. This one, Star Guardian Rel. The scion of a well-connected political family, every aspect of Rel's life was ruthlessly picked apart by her parents, leaving her alienated and unable to make friends. Her chaotic rebellion against them and the school they oversaw succeeded in winning her independence, along with an unjust reputation as a troublemaker and a one-way ticket to Valorin City High. To protect her lonely heart, she's learned to push everyone away, yet beneath her unbreakable shell dwells a brilliant, loyal Star Guardian whose only wish is to turn back the dark. And uh, her magical medium in this AU is named Sebastian. As wild as the girl that tamed him, Sebastian rides into the fray at Rel's side, a fun-sized representation of her rule-breaking attitude. If the fight calls for it, Sebastian transforms into a steed capable of carrying Rel on its back. Sometimes Rel catches it trying to fit in spaces much too small for its battle form. It will always be a miniature horse at heart. <laughs> Like a cat trying to sit inside a box that's just like too small. For her. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Now it's also worth noting she has an old bio listed here that's slightly different. And I don't know at what point they rewrote the Star Guardian specific bio, but her old bio on this um, says that she hailed from a sister city along with Quinn and she's thriving in Valorant City, much to the chagrin of her homeroom instructors. Known for vandalizing school property and beating bullies to a pulp in the halls, she's not easy to get along with and prefers to work alone especially when riding her mighty steed Sebastian. <laughs> Yet rumors swirl of an unapologetic manga fan with distinctive hair and a violent temper, though nobody's brave enough to ask about a possible connection. Like between the hair. So it's like and... Hannah Montana. Like she puts a wig on and they yeah. know who she is. And now she likes, but she does manga. She reads manga she instead manga. of sings. <laughs> she puts her purple wig on and she's in manga mode. Hannah Manga Tana. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Full manga alchemist. Yeah. I like that pile better. That, that to me is a little more like. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, this is also, that's more of the characterization we get in the. Um, in the visual novel, weird, way, way more that. Huh. I like that Sebastian yeah. stuck around. They're like, that's the hell name yeah. Of the horse. <laughs> if if there's a if there's a tiny horse, it's named Sebastian. Sebastian. We can put a Lil there, <laughs> right? Oh, that's Lil Sebastian. Oh my god! I didn't even think of that. That's perfect. I love that. It's got to be right. Like there's it's no gotta way it's be. not. Oh, Lil Sebastian. <laughs> Uh, now, she shows up in the cinematic Shadow of a Doubt uh, right at the beginning in some pictures a collie's looking at. And then that's it. The rest of the cinematic's just a collie and a oh. collie shadow. <laughs> sure. Uh -huh. um, and then she shows up in the visual Goddamn. novel. Collie shadow is more important than her. I know. She gets Bummer. a lot of screen time in that cinematic. <laughs> Damn. That's rough right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's in the visual novel Another Sky. So Quinn and Rel show up from another school and join Kaisa's team of Star Guardians. Uh, at one point, I'm just kind of skipping around to just the parts that have Rel in it because yeah. this story, you know, it's fucking it. long. Yeah. At one point, Zoe's pondering destroying the city again uh, before being interrupted by Rel. So Rel kind of talks with Zoe, seemingly unaware that she is the Twilight Star at all. They just kind of have a heart to heart. And then as they continue their conversation, Zoe begins to calm down after, uh, you know, losing her her best friend. Um, and eventually leaves, thanking Rel and promising to kill her last when she returns. <laughs> hmm. uh, and if you do kind of the Kaisa interactions with Rel, um, you find she's very protective but hot-headed, uh, which is cool when she's standing up to bullies um, in the stories, but then also she gets kicked out of a park once for standing up to a deer that spooked a kid into dropping his ice cream. <laughs> it just goes off on it. <laughs> Um, she's also a closet manga nerd, but she denies it for a while, preferring to play Valorant with Echo instead. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but Kaisa eventually finds out that Rel's parents hate that part of her, and they got rid of her entire manga collection entirely. Aww. So what she has now, she's kind of rebuilt from scratch. Wow. Um, yeah. That's like way That's more. That's the first thing that made me really feel. <laughs> 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 like what your mom murdered a bunch of kids to make you more powerful mm -mm -mm. she destroyed your manga collection oh, oh baby. Poor baby come here I'll be your mom <laughs> <laughs> luckily over time Rel opens up to the team and then Kaisa mentions it must be nice to be able to be your authentic self and uh she takes her wig off. She, she agrees. <laughs> uh, uh, she agrees, but then she's she's confused why her parents can't love her like that. Aww. And Kaisa says that parents can be confusing, but until they come around, they'll support her in any way she needs. <laughs> and given that she's canonically bi, this kind of seems like a pretty clear metaphor for the non-acceptance of yes. the parents. But I need you to do your first AU song parody and do parents just don't understand. Oh, <laughs> yes. oh fucking yeah. <laughs> really throw it back. Hell yeah. Rel yeah. Why doesn't you say that? 
Right? <laughs> Not even once? Come oh on, God, Rel. She should. Is that Jack or Rel saying that? I quote? thought you were cool. <laughs> Go to Rel. <laughs> <laughs> the possibilities Just are all endless. the hell work play. Go to RE double hockey sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a handful of fun, ha- fun, fun, fun facts. Fun mm-hmm. hacks. Let's go. Life hacks. Ever since Life hacks. <laughs> Some real life hacks uh, over here. Uh, step one, don't be null. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> uh, Rel is voiced by uh, Leia de Leon Hayes. Nice. And the goal for Rel was to create a darker themed female tank support. Okay. I mean, had... I think Leona's pretty dark. She, I feel like she wasn't at the time. I guess that's 2020? fair. Or just like, or maybe she's too, br- maybe like, they were like, you know. She's related she's to the sun. Dark, dark theme, but she's sun related, <laughs> yeah, so, so it cancels w- out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like that was the, I, it, it reads very much like that was the, the thing they wanted and then they worked backwards, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, she also originally had a voiceover interaction with Talia, but this was scrapped because they thought there'd be low activation frequency typically in a game between her and a mid laner do you know what although it, she does have interactions with other mid laners so hmm. do you know mm-hmm. what it was supposed to be like is there i don't to... know that was just kind of something that a rider said like oh they had an interaction with uh talia but... oh, okay sure hmm. yeah maybe something about controlling rocks and she controlled metal sure yeah maybe sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send her to Shurima. Let's get that quote. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rel was actually first mentioned in the Samira story. Hmm. That was before she was actually released. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like a little little teaser for her. Uh, Rel's 16 years old. Her height is 5 feet and 7 inches. Why do we know this? Um, because there's actually, there was a specific, <laughs> <laughs> there's this one, uh, there's this one rioter who people consistently ask them, like, what's this character's height? What's this character's height? So he's just got a bunch of Twitter posts <laughs> specifying character height. Okay. <laughs> She's taller than me. Mm. She's got tall hair, too. I wonder if that counts the hair. Good question. <laughs> um, Rel's implied by her voice line and multiple writers to be bisexual. Mm-hmm. Um, Rel's parents come from very different parts of Runeterra, so she herself is biracial, biracial as well. Um, and then Rel shapes her mount as a horse instead of a basilisk as a form of rebellion against Noxus's military systems. I, that okay. means nothing to me. Sure. Because I guess a lot of them probably ride basilisks instead. They kind of remind me of the Fire Nation. You know how they're like always riding those fucking oh, giant lizards and shit? Oh, okay. I do. I, but I, okay, sure. 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 I haven't yeah. seen this ever... Uh, shown in game, I feel like. I need to but, see Darius so, riding I mean, one of those. There's not a lot. Be yeah. fucking badass. <laughs> we need a. Ba- why don't we have a basilisk rider? We've got Cled, but like, that ain't no basilisk. <laughs> it's wow, close it's rude enough. as hell. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the uh, the Yordle basilisk, you know. <laughs> uh, also, her horse does not have a name. Oh, Sebastian. <laughs> Big Sebastian. <laughs> Big Sebastian. <laughs> Iron Sebastian. <laughs> Um, her armor is partly extracted from the ground, partly from other people's gear. Um, so it sometimes has steel, pig iron, and various other alloys, depending on what's available. Mm. Uh, Rel's power is largely not electromagnetic based. So at the moment, it's unlikely that she's capable of pulling metal from inside other people's bodies. Okay. Is this just so that she doesn't do the Magneto, like pull all the iron? Yes, okay. that's my assumption. <laughs> is specifically to clarify that she cannot do the Magneto. She's not Magneto, guys. Stop calling her that. Uh. Um, actually, Rel can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think I think Magneto is specifically electromagnetic too. They do make a point of that. He can. At peak power, I feel like create black holes or some shit. Really, like that. I I'm play with it a whole lot. Affect EM fields and shit. Okay, yeah, yeah sure, I believe it. Uh, and then finally, in the Brazilian dub, um, so Rel's got a line that says these sigils are a reminder. Um, screw my sigils. Oh, she does say screw something. Mm. I thought that was Jack. In, in the Brazilian dubs, 
Mm -hmm. the the translation is these symbols are a reminder fuck my sigils which makes her the first champion to have audible profanity Mm -hmm. well i mean you know audible f word profanity right because yeah i guess you know well i guess it's bleeped for clit right yeah yeah he's got a bunch of bleeped profanity (laughs) (laughs) non-audible (laughs) <laughs> okay I'll get, I'll get, podcast okay. sponsored by audible <laughs> <laughs> audible hit us up audible hit us up <laughs> uh, yeah those real? are all those are all my fun facts very good that's real that's real any final um angry thoughts <laughs> i said most of them i think so yeah. i feel like we can't even really say like I'd like another short story to explore some of these concepts because they really would like I I would love I just want a lore rewrite. I feel like this character this character has so much cool things that they could do, but not the way that the bio is currently written. Mm-hmm. The bio needs a rewrite. It might. I I would like a if I was going to pick a short story, I would like a one that's quiet, not an action piece, and I would like one that was yeah. about her time at the academy and the escape. Because I think that could really, that's where maybe you could start shoring up a lot of these problems that we kind of have with it. I mean, like you said, there's still big glaring issues that have extended beyond it. But that's like the thing I want the most to get into Rel's head. Um, Like what it was like and what happened to her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was Rel. Thank you for listening. (laughs) Rel, Rel, Rel. Sorry. Well, Rel, (laughs) Rel. We have a Twitter, it's at Loreheads. We also have a Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash Loreheads. Sean streams on the weekends. I'm trying to do evenings now, playing TFT, and then we might like swap to ARAMs together after the baby goes to sleep. <laughs> we have a YouTube as well. We post um, some short clips of like the video of these here. We've mentioned parody songs. John has those. We have a Discord as well. It's linked in the description of this episode and pinned on our Twitter if you ever want to chat. Hmm. We also have a Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our patrons. But a very special thank you to our Madarda tier patrons. Big Man Gnomes, Chloe Things, King of Hearts, Sejuani's Baby Daddy, Shupa Moustache, and Techno Robert. Y'all are amazing and so generous. And if you were nulled, I'd find some way to give up my sigils to bring you back. <laughs> he would feed you. I'm gonna say up you would feed a little curious applesauce. I'd, <laughs> I'd baby bird you. <laughs> Ew! No, no. <laughs> I'm not null. I'm not null. No, uh, I think somebody. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> And please, Brie, oh, please, Brie, <laughs> love Brie, be sure to join us <laughs> next week. I'm so excited. We're talking about Mommy, the Chem Baroness, Renata Glask. Ooh, I am excited. 